Good evening, everybody. Thank you all for coming tonight on such a beautiful Tuesday evening. Um, so today we're going to talk about GMOs. And it's going to be some information that I think um, we need to hear just because um, I hear a lot of people defending GMOs and saying how great they are. So we're going to learn a little bit about the arguments that they set forth. Um, so let's get right into it. So first question is, what is a GMO? And I hear that a lot. I mean, I talk about GMOs a lot and people don't really understand what it is and even what it stands for. So it's genetically modified organism. And what you do is you get, um, it's done in the laboratory and you get genes from one species and you put it into a different species. And um, sounds benign enough until you get into it and really figure out where these different species are coming from. Um, for example, the flavor saver tomato, which we're going to talk about, which is no longer on the market because it was a failure, but they wanted to put a gene in the tomato that the tomato wouldn't freeze. So like when it was growing and it got too cold. Um, so what they did is they got the gene out of a fish and spliced it in and put it in the tomato. Sounds delightful, doesn't it? <laughs> so um, there's different types of GMOs. And I want to talk about them because it's really important to know. So the first one is herbicide resistant. And sometimes you might see um, HT, which is herbicide tolerant. Um, and those are what we commonly refer to as Roundup Ready seeds or crops. And then there's insect resistant, which is the BT, which we're going to talk about. Um, disease resistance and improved nutrition. So there's these four basic types of, of GMOs. Um, and none of these actually benefit you as a human being. Um, these are all really, really great for Monsanto and Syngenta and the big, um, the big chemical companies. So let's talk a little bit about GMOs, some basic facts about GMOs. So first thing is they're regulated by the FDA, the USDA, and the EPA. And so the USDA, they're responsible for protecting agriculture from pests um, and and disease. And so that kind of makes sense. But the EPA, like really, they're regulating any of this or looking into it. And the reason is they, they regulate pesticides. And so corn, GMO corn with the BT, um, genetically modified seed, they're registered as pesticides. So if you're eating one of those, um, you're actually eating a registered pesticide. Um, and so they're charged with making sure that crops and foods and everything that they're safe for pesticides. So you can be assured that you're having a safe level of pesticide in your food as you're eating it. Um, and then the first, the, the first GE thing that was introduced into the um, into the food supply, or GE is genetically engineered, is an enzyme, it's a microbe that they use for cheese. So, um, and this was way back in the 90s. So this is a long time ago. And of course this happens, you know, very quietly. Like nobody knows, this isn't something that's big in the news, this is something that is just introduced. So um, that I think is really disturbing. In the US, the, the main um, GE crops are cotton, um, so, soybeans and corn. And just so that you know, they're, in other countries, they've got other GE seeds that are out there. So this is big for the US. Um, and most GE crops, what they're used for is like ingredients in all of the packaged products that we buy. And so what I have is a list here of ingredients that, on your handout, it's a list of ingredients that will likely contain um, genetically modified organisms or genetically engineered um, crops. And so you want to watch for these, these ingredients. Um, 
and they're commonly used in cornstarch and corn syrup. So when you start looking at your at your packages, look for those. Anything with corn in it, put it back on the shelf. Um, especially if it's corn oil, corn starch, corn syrup, things like that. Um, and then also cotton seed oil and soybean. Um, those are commonly in things like salad dressings and mayonnaise and things like that. Um, and so this is what I find very interesting. So we say that the FDA and the EPA and the USDA that they regulate. Well, that's not really true. So the FDA encourages developers of genetically engineered plants to consult with them before marketing it to the public. The problem is it's voluntary. So this isn't something that the FDA is even, you know, expecting. They don't require it. And so when we hear that, oh, well, you know what, the FDA, you know, they're, they're there to protect us and, and they're the ones that are monitoring all of this. No, they're not putting their stamp of approval on it. This is all voluntary. And what happens is we've got the um, big companies, Monsanto, Syngenta, they're doing their own tests and then giving the good ones over to the government for scrutiny. So first question is, are GMOs safe? And here's an, a quote from the FDA on their website. The FDA has no basis for concluding that bioengineered foods differ from other foods in any meaningful or uniform way, or that as a class, foods developed by the new techniques present any different or greater safety concern than foods developed by traditional plant breeding. So they're even admitting they have no basis for concluding. So this is kind of scary. I mean, there if you actually look at their website and start reading it and digging into it, I mean, you'll see all of this stuff. So this is picture of some lab rats that have been fed genetically engineered foods and these poor little rats have huge huge tumors and if this is happening to a lab rat, I mean, what's happening to to us? So what we're going to hear about and what you might hear about is all the advantages of GMO foods. And there's a lot. They're insect resistant, they're herbicide tolerant, they're drought resistant, they yield, um, they produce more yield, um, so it's an increase in yield, they're nutrient enhanced, and they're virus tolerant. So these are some of the arguments that you're going to hear if you ever have a discussion with somebody that is pro-GMO. So the first one is ins insect um, resistant. So is this really a good thing? Um, and I would say no. So what they do, and we're going to get to uh, in another slide a little bit more detailed about what happens to make this, but what happens is the insect eats the plant, eats the, the corn, and their gut explodes. And so it's designed to do this for the bug. So if that's happening to the bug and then you eat that same corn, I mean, you can be guaranteed it's going to have some kind of effect on your body as well. So what happens is they get the sweet corn, they get the DNA from bacteria and viruses which is something I don't want in my food either, bacteria or viruses, um, and they splice it in um, into the DNA to help it tolerate the weed killers. And then they're able to spray way more Roundup on the crops. And so instead of crops needing less herbicides and less pesticides and less of these chemicals, they actually end up needing more. So this little cartoon that I think is so appropriate, it's, this is what the government kind of says to you. Like, oh yeah, it's going to kill the, the bugs, it's going to kill the, the weeds, it's going to kill everything, all these bad things, but it's not going to have any effect on you. But if it's going to explode, you know, the gut of a, a worm, it's going to do something to your gut as well, which we're going to see. So what happens is 
they, um, they spray these crops heavily with glyphosate. And glyphosate is like the main ingredient in Roundup. So you'll hear that a lot, Roundup Ready seeds, you know, Roundup Ready GMO crops. So if you look at the chart here, um, what you'll see is that when Roundup, this red line here represents when Roundup was, um, or excuse me, when the GMO seeds were introduced into the market. And the, the lines, the green, the dotted line, and the yellow are the amount of Roundup that they've used since then. So you could see that it's just skyrocketed. Um, the percentage increase in using the glyphosate. So Roundup corn and how they make it. So what they do is they get DNA from bacteria and it's DNA that's naturally resistant to the, the Roundup. And then they get E. coli and then they combine that and then they get the bacteria that causes tumor in plants and they use that bacteria so that they can breach the cell wall. Now the problem with all of this is these are natural defense mechanisms that the plant already has and we're just doing whatever we can to like power through and splice the DNA and really alter what's going on in this poor plant. So one of the other side things with um, genetically engineered foods, especially the ones that are Roundup ready, is that they spray, as I showed you in the earlier slide, they spray way more Roundup. Well, Roundup contains glyphosate, which I talked to you about, and glyphosate, it's a metal chelator. So what that means is it attracts metals, and so, and minerals, and things like that. And as you could see, it was used as a descaling agent. And so what happens is it grabs onto the ions and it pulls them out. So it pulls them out of the food, but if you're eating the foods that are heavily sprayed with Roundup, it's also going to pull those, those minerals out of you. So minerals that you need, like magnesium and phosphorus, all these minerals that are essential to your health, are going to be pulled out of your body. They're also going to be pulled out of the plants themselves. So there's a lot of issues with Roundup. Another issue with Roundup is it's a really huge endocrine disruptor. So um, this can cause fertility problems. It can make you fat. Um, it can cause you know you to like you know, girls to develop a lot quicker, causes a lot of problems, but it can also cause birth defects. And another side note is that when um, the Roundup Ready foods and seeds came onto the market and they needed to have more, um, more spray, the EPA actually increased the amount of safe level for glyphosate in your food. So what they do is they say, here's safe levels of you know, different chemicals and different things that's safe for you to have in your food, and it's at a certain level. And it happens to be a sliding scale, apparently, because we have more and more Roundup. So instead of saying, let's get rid of Roundup, well, let's just increase it. So it's safe for you to have more and more of it. And so it binds to um, metals that your body needs and el eliminates them. And there's a lot of us out there that are deficient in minerals and not really realizing why we're deficient in minerals. Um, it's an antibiotic killing. Um, and so what it's going to do is going to affect your gut bacteria, which we're finding out that the microbiome on your body and in your body is like your immune system. It's critical to your immune system. And if you start messing with your microbiome in your gut, you're going to have issues and issues that are severe and things like autoimmune conditions and things like that. Um, it has a possible link to autism and actually 
there's another slide coming up, but they have found there's a new study that came out that shows that there's a correlation between the increase of Roundup and autism. Um, it's linked to cancer and it damages the cellular DNA. So these are all things that it does to us. So if it's not bad enough having this genetically engineered food, then you combine Roundup on it and glyphosate on it. I mean, that's enough to just say, you know, no thank you. Um, so here's the slide I was telling you about. And there is a direct correlation between the rise in autism and the rise of the use of glyphosate. So um, definitely not something that you want to feed your children. So the next argument that we hear is that it's drought resistant. Now, if you look at um, the actual studies on this, you'll see that this is just a flat out lie. This is just not true. Um, there's been more success on scientists using conventional me methods to make seeds that are drought resistant, way more successful than using anything that's genetically engineered. And so there's, there's studies on this that, that show this. And the other thing too is um, even if you have like a drought resistant seed, it doesn't mean it needs less water. So um, you still need the same amount of water to produce the food and the fiber and everything that um, that crop produces. And so here's a picture here on the left of um, drought resistant or the effect of a 2012 drought on corn. And on the left side is conventional corn, which you could see that field is much nicer, and much more lush than the field over on the right. And if you look at the amount of output, it's 120 bushels per acre on the conventional method versus 12 bushels per acre on the um, genetically engineered. So when they start telling you that, um, it's not true. And it's kind of like the pharmaceutical companies that will do these studies and they'll tell you how great their drug is and then there's a lot of information that they don't give you. That's the same kind of thing that um, Monsanto and these other companies do. They only want to turn over the information that is beneficial. And the other thing that they do is that they rig the studies. And so you don't have a good control group. And so the study actually might prove what they're trying to say, but if you look at how they conduct the study, um, there's so many flaws in it that you got to throw the whole study out. So that's another thing to look at. So don't just accept, you know, what people say, you know, these arguments that you hear. The next one is the yield increase. And what we hear a lot about is that, um, the world population, it's exploding, there's not enough food, we need to have these. I mean, these are going to save the world. These are going to save our children. It's going to save the world. And again, it's another line of BS. It's not true. Um, there's a definitive study that was done in 2009. And this definitive study reported that there's a failure to yield. And so, this is the study that shows that um, what they're saying is absolutely false. And you can actually Google this and you can find the study and you can read the whole study. You can read how it was conducted and you can see that this argument, it falls. And I've given actually a list of resources on the back of the flyer so that um, you can educate yourself and there's a list of resources resources for scientific research so because um, I know this is actually a hotly debated topic I actually got into a discussion with somebody about GMOs this weekend who he's an engineer and just believes that um, mankind has the solution to everything and you know showed me a graph about how you know we've been able to increase the yield and you know he sold but there's a lot of people out there that have those beliefs 
and I think it's important that we educate ourselves so that we can inform other people. Okay, so nutrient enhancement. This is the only argument out of these, what, six arguments um, that has anything to do with us, you know, the human body. All the other arguments have to do with the crop itself, how great the crop is. Um, however, another line of BS. It's absolutely not true. Um, so there's a field study that was done and Monsanto mysteriously lost the, all the data. So the, the actual data that showed um, that there is no enhancement in nutrients um, was lost. But years later there was a doctor that was doing some research and found it and realized, wait a minute, you know, <laughs> Monsanto's lying to us again. So um, what it covered, what it uncovered is that soy has lower levels of protein. And one of the things that people talk about soy a lot, you'll hear a lot of discussions, you know, soy is really good if you, you know, to protect you against um, breast cancer. It's got the isoflavones and that's, that's what we need. The problem with that is that, you know, like 98% of the soy in U.S. is genetically modified and um, genetically modified soy actually has way less of that. So you don't even have that protective quality of soy. So we're being t told all this stuff on our commercials about how great soy is for you. Um, however, especially if you have GMO soy, which I don't think that anybody should be consuming soy in the first place, but especially if you've got GMO soy, um, it's got twice the amount of lectin, which is an anti-nutrient, um, and it's got seven times as much trypsin inhibitor, and that's a known allergen. So there's a lot of problems that we've got with the GMO soy. Um, so then golden rice. So golden rice is hailed as this great, great rice product. Um, it's got more beta carotene, which gives it that golden color. And the golden rice is gonna save our children from blindness. Well, another BS story. Because, um, first of all, these malnourished children don't have the ability to convert the beta carotene to the vitamin A, which they need. Um, and then a two-year-old child needs to eat like seven pounds of this golden rice a day to even have the effect that they're talking about. So it's ridiculous. Um, and then, like I said, it's got 12 to 14 percent lower amounts of the cancer-fighting isoflavones. Um, and then canola oil. So the genetically engineered canola oil. Um, so what they do is they say, well, it's got vitamin A, you know, so this is going to be really good for you. But what they don't tell you is that it's got way, way less vitamin E. You need vitamin E. So vitamin E, when you take vitamin E, it kind of acts as a preservative for your fat-soluble vitamins. So it's good for you to take vitamin E with fat-soluble vitamins. It helps you know, preserve it so they don't break down and, and they don't oxidize. And so, you know, if you're, having your canola oil because it's high in vitamin A, you're not getting any protection from the vitamin E, which is necessary. Um, and we're not even going to get into the whole thing of how they process the canola oil. Um, but all this to say, this whole argument about enhancing the nutrient quality of the food, again, it's a bunch of BS. Okay, so the next one argument that they come up with is virus tolerance. And I have heard so many people talk about the papayas. And so the papayas in Hawaii, um, they had this virus and there was, you know, destroyed a lot of the crop. And so um, Monsanto and in their infinite wisdom says, okay, well, we're going to make a GMO seed that is going to be um, resist the, the virus. And they will say, you know what, 
we have saved the crop of papayas in Hawaii. You know what? It's not true. Um, I'll go into that a little bit later. But potato was another one that was, um, was not a success. One of the things that they wanted to do is cause the potato to glow in the dark when it needed water. Um, that didn't work. Um, zucchini and the, the squash, another problem with that is that there's too many viruses. And so they weren't, that one hasn't really taken off. There is GMO, zucchini and squash, but it's only like 2%. So um, there's not a whole lot out there, thank goodness. Um, but back to the papayas. So um, what it was, what, 97, um, oh, 98, 98 is when they um, brought in the, the genetically engineered seeds. And it's been a complete, complete failure. Um, so ever since the, they had the, the big virus um, with the papayas, the genetically engineered seeds were introduced, but the output has declined ever since that outbreak. And they haven't gotten it back. Um, and Hawaii is so contaminated. It is so sad. So what happened in Hawaii is quietly the big companies bought up land on islands like Molokai. Molokai is a beautiful island. Like the locals live there. Um, it's not a tourist I island at all. And without them even knowing, they had um, Monsanto and they had these different companies growing experimental crops and there's signs that say you know not for human consumption and they didn't know what it was and finally when they found out what it was the islands had been contaminated and Hawaii is like ground zero for for GMO and you'll look at the signs and it doesn't say Monsanto it'll say like Hawaiian research or something like that so they're hiding it if Monsanto's that proud of their work and what they're doing and how they're saving the world, then, you know, put your name on it. Be proud. But they know exactly what they're doing. So that is just really sad. Um, okay, so how are they made? Um, we talked about this just a little bit, but you got the bacteria and viruses, and they're like the, the delivery system. And they um, bring the... The, the DNA and the genes into the, um, into the um, genome. There's another way that they do it, and the other way is they get little particles, like gold or whatever, and they shoot them in to, to the seed. But, you know, that's not really very accurate, so they're not exactly sure where it's shooting into. It's shooting into to the DNA, but where in that sequence? And is it shooting in somewhere that's going to cause other issues and other problems? Another way is electric shocks. And um, the thing is, they have to use such force. It's completely unnatural. I mean, this is something that has never happened before. This is a science experiment that, you know, it's, it's, there's no going back. It's kind of like Jurassic Park, you know, where they hatched the, the dinosaur and everything was cool and they're all excited and then all hell breaks loose. You know, but that's basically what's happening here and you can't take it back. You know, you've got wind and you've got cross-contamination and a lot of things that are happening with our environment. So, okay, we're going to talk about some of the dangers and the risks. Um, and so one of them is the digestive tract. I mean, this is a huge, huge, huge risk. And so one of the things I wanted to point out, even though the Flavor Saver tomato is no longer on the, the market, 7 out of 20 female rats develop stomach lesions. And so this information was actually brought to the attention of the FDA. And they said, well, you know what, these tomatoes, they don't demonstrate a reasonable certainty of no harm. And then there's this additive branch of the FDA. And they said, yeah, you know what, there's still unresolved questions that remain. So that sounds great, right? 
Now, so politics gets involved, and this is the part that is so frustrating. Even though FDA has made these comments and said, you know, this is unsafe, we've got questions, there's something wrong here, they kept it on the market. And the only reason they're not on the market is because the public didn't like them. They weren't a high quality tomato. But if they're going to do that and sweep under the rug all the evidence of the dangers of the flavor saver tomato, I mean, what are they doing with the corn? And if you notice also what they do is they target Monsanto and Syngenta Cargill, they target like the staples, you know, corn, it's a staple. That's something that, that is in almost everybody's diet. And you know, you've got the, the cotton. And so cotton is really important too because you've also got cotton clothing. And your clothing is made out of GMO cotton. So, I mean, the ramifications are staggering when you start thinking about all of this. Okay, so a couple other dangers is um, they cause liver damage. And we've seen that in the rat studies that were done. There's higher death rate and organ damage, reproductive failures, infant mortality, um, and the farmers that feed uh, their livestock, they report that there's um, sterility and deaths in their animals. So this is a picture of a young child that um, was exposed to GMO foods and had a very painful rash, swelling of the lips, um, and it just, it's, it's painful. And, you know, if this is happening to, to children, a lot of times people don't put the connection, you know, that it's GMOs. Um, but if this is happening and having this severe of a reaction on people, it's something that needs to really be questioned. Um, so going back to, um, to rats and sterility, so on the left is the testicle of an, a rat that's been fed normal food. And you can see it's plump and it's pink and it's a good color. The genetically modified um, testicle, I mean, look at the color, look at the size. So we're having problems. And if you look at the, the rats themselves, you'll see the one on the right has been fed genetically modified foods. Well, I mean, that's because they're not getting the nutrients. And that's because they're having all the other problems that we talked about. They're having liver damage and reproductive problems. And what had happened was um, there's these Russian scientists that were doing these lab tests and they ended up feeding all the rats um, GMO um, food. And what happened, they had to stop the, the test because all of the rats were getting the same food. But what happened was the infant mortality rate soared like up to like 55%. So it's causing reproductive issues. And you know, we can look now. What's happening to our society? So many people are having reproductive issues. You see these fertility clinics, you know, like sprouting up all over the place. And, you know, you can't help but wonder, is, is this the cause or at least part of the cause? Okay, this is the most absolutely disturbing thing to me that I learned through this whole thing. And this is baby formula containing GMO soy. Um, one of the reasons why it's so disturbing to me is because of the WIC program. And what they do is they supply um, free infant formula to mothers of newborns. However, it's only the genetically engineered varieties. You're never going to see them giving free to some mother uh, formula that is organic. They're all across the board genetically modified. So this poor child from birth practically is going to be exposed to genetically modified um, foods, exposed to you know fertility issues, liver issues, stomach issues, allergies. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And this is the kind of stuff that needs to, that needs to stop. 
we need to let people know, especially our, our children, they're the most vulnerable of our society. We need to stand up for them and protect them. And Vandana Shiva, she's one of my heroes. Absolutely love this woman. She's brilliant. Um, and she says, you can't take a gene and insert it into a cell and call it life. It's pollution. And she's absolutely right. It's pollution. Um, and Monsanto, Monsanto has, this is a direct quote from Monsanto. Monsanto should not have to vouch for the safety of biotech food. Our interest is in selling as much of it as possible, assuring the safety is the FDA's job. However, we've got a revolving door with Monsanto and um, the FDA, and it's this revolving door. And so, you know, we got to make sure that Michael Taylor has his job, and so he protects Monsanto, and then he goes back and forth. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous that we don't have the, the protections from our government that we need. So you guys all have that choice. You know, every time you buy something that's genetically modified, you're choosing that. And it's creating more of a market. And that's what happened in Europe. Europe says, no, we don't want you. And so Monsanto's packed up, you know, their belongings and come back here and said, okay, then we're just going to do what we do in the U.S. Um, but we can also impact what's going on by supporting the local farmer, which I'm just a huge fan and supporter of farmer's markets because it is the local farmer. And you can talk to them about their food, where it came from, how they grow it. Um, and it's so much cheaper than going to the store and, and buying it. So we all have that power. And, you know, just takes a, you know, tipping point. So Vandana Shiva, who, um, my hero, she has five reasons why this genetically engineered foods is just not sustainable. And she's just brilliant. And so number one, it's a patented seed. And so normally what happens, and in the past, is a farmer grows a crop and the farmer saves some of the seeds from that crop and then plants them for the next year. Well, because it's a patented seed, you can't do that. Um, it causes soil infertility. It causes um, the soils just being depleted. So remember we talked about like glyphosate, how it's a, a metal and mineral chelator. So it takes the, the minerals and everything out of the soil. And then you've got the monocultures. And monocultures mean just having like one crop. Um, that's not sustainable. What we need is biodiversity. We have to have more than one crop. And so it causes soil infertility. And you'll see what's happening down in the Amazon. Um, what they're doing is they're just chopping down the Amazon so they can grow soy so that they can feed cattle. Um, it's horrible. But what's, what's happening is you can't get that fertility back in the land anymore. It's completely depleted. Um, and so again, it's monocropping and loss of biodiversity. Um, there's like thousands of varieties of different types of plants that are going extinct because we don't have the biodiversity anymore. Um, the next thing is these seeds have terminator um, technology in it so that you can't plant the seed again. So you can't save a Monsanto seed from your crop and plant it again. It's not gonna, it's not gonna grow. So that's another reason why it's not sustainable. And then you're completely dependent on a centralized food system. And that's what they want. If you control the food, you can control the world. And um, Again, Vandana Shiva, I mean, she's just such, such a hero. She speaks out about biopiracy and Monsanto. Um, but, you know, she says that we must occupy the food system. And the way that we do that is by supporting the local farmer um, and growing your own. You know, you can start an herb garden. Even if you don't have a plot of land, you can buy some pots. You can start an herb garden. 
And you can also educate people and let people know um, what actually is going on. And I get really encouraged because there's people out there that are starting to leave the industry. And this guy, he's from the, um, the <coughs> Agriculture Department in Canada. And he used to be a um, pro-GMO supporter. And by what he's learned in that field, I mean, he's realized that it's what they're telling us isn't true. And he's come out and he said, you know, it's not even scientific what they're saying. It's kind of, again, like the whole vaccine thing. You know, they try and make it sound really scientific. Um, but when you actually de dive deep into the studies, you'll see it's not scientific. And it's the same thing with the, the GMOs. And so the eight number one foods to avoid is the canola oil, the corn, the cotton seed, the Hawaiian papaya. Um, it does come from Mexico and other places that don't have um, GMO papayas. Soy and sugar beets. That's another ingredient to kind of look for. Um, when you're looking at your ingredient list, you know, what, what's the sugar source? You know, is it, is it sugar beets? Um, I wouldn't eat anything with sugar beets in it. And unfortunately, we have to be really careful when you go to restaurants because they're going to cook a lot of their stuff in the corn oil or vegetable oil. And you can't even trust the olive oil because olive oil, that whole industry isn't even regulated. So just be careful what you're ordering when you go to the restaurant. Um, sorry for all that bad news. Um, but I think it's important to be aware. Um, and then here's the list. And like I said, I, I provided you a list you could take home with you. Look for these ingredients. If you have any of these ingredients on your product and it's not a certified organic product, um, then put it back on the shelf. And don't be fooled. A lot of us get fooled. I used to be fooled by the word natural. Um, natural means absolutely nothing. Um, as you can see, you can have genetically engineered ingredients in natural foods. So that goes for natural hair care products, skin care products, anything that's labeled natural. BS means absolutely nothing. It looks pretty, it sounds pretty, but it's meaningless. So you want to look for the USDA seal. Oops. Um, so there's some products that they kind of promote that they're great products. Uh, for example, the Go Lean, the Kashi, um, they got GMO ingredients in there. Um, Snyder's, some of these products I don't know because I don't shop at the grocery store anymore. Um, but just be careful and again, read the labels. And especially that word natural, it means absolutely nothing. So. Again, it's time for us to like rethink things and, and s start making some changes. And it's not the genetics that put you at risk. It's like what you eat. That is what is like really controlling. It's so important. Every time you eat, you have, you know, you're, you're making a decision. And it's worth your while to investigate a little bit look at what it is that you're eating and only put organic foods in your mouth. And, you know, a lot of people don't want to spend the extra money for organic. And I say you pay now or you pay later. I'd rather pay a little bit extra now. Um, and then if you go to farmer's market, it's actually cheaper. Um, I've gotten produce so inexpensive at farmer's market and it's organic, and it's wholesome, and it's good for you. And I'm supporting those people and those families. Not, you know, I feel good about. And it's all about sick care versus health care. And we're all about health care here. That's what's important, keeping healthy. And when you have a diet full of GMO foods and processed foods, it's sick care. Um, you're going to have issues. You're going to start breaking down. You're not going to be feeling that great. And actually, that's where the money is, you know. 
they can get you with prescription pills and they can um, get you coming to the doctor and, and that's where the money is and we want to stay out of the sick care and we want to go into the health care and so it's going back to the basics the basics are so important and Hal Huggins um, you know nutrition is the most important component to healing and no matter what it is that you're dealing with nutrition is the most important because whatever you eat it becomes your bones your ligaments, your brain, your blood, everything. That's the foundation. That's the building block. So a few of my favorite things. Um, coconut oil. I don't use body care products, all those, you know, Bed Bath & Beyond, pretty smelling things. Um, they're really toxic. Olive oil is amazing. If you want anything with a scent, you can put essential oils in it. Um, enzymes. We're talking about GMOs. Enzymes are really, really critical. Um, GMO foods have proteins in them that are really difficult to break down. Your body can't break them down and that's causing issues. And the enzyme line that I carry actually has a, a enzyme that is designed specifically for the really hard to break down proteins. And it's good for if you have a diet that you, you, know, you get GMO foods in. And it's kind of hard if you're out on the run and you're eating at restaurants and you're trying to do your best, but it's really hard to be 100% GMO free just because you don't know what they're cooking with in the back kitchen. Um, and even at your, you know, at your own house, sometimes it's hard to be 100% GMO free. So it's good to supplement with enzymes. Um, and so I help people um, with a lot of different issues. Um, I'm an attorney, and so I do that. I help people with birthing plans and vaccine exemptions and personal injury cases. Um, and then also I have a um, simple four-step analysis, which there's a coupon here that's on your seat. And i um, happy to speak with you about that and actually get you on a really good regimen with regard to enzymes because um, I think that is critical to your health. And, you know, we eat ourselves back to health it's one bite at a time. It might take a little bit of time to get back there because we've, you know, accumulated so many toxins in our bodies. However, that's the only way that we're going to get out of this one bite at a time. Um, so thank you very much for showing up and thank you for your attention.